Hey, 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 Tonal family. Kate here, your community manager, coming at you with another episode of Tonal Talk. We have a ton of new members in the community this week. So please, if you are new, if it's your first time watching, leave a comment below. Let me know where you're watching from. I can't wait to get to know you all. I'm going to pin this to the top of the group so that everyone can find it. If you were here 30 minutes ago, we had a, a question and answer session with Coach Liz where she couldn't hear me. So we did charades for 30 minutes. Hopefully we won't have to do that with tonight's guest, Max. But if we do, it'll be funny for you all. <laughs> Alrighty, so I have a ton of announcements for you. We have been busy over in Tonal Land bringing you new features, new content, and new community uh, activations. So let's jump into it. New features. We've got warm-up sets. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. I used the feature last night and it was fantastic. So if you are creating custom workouts um, or um, yeah, custom workouts in your mobile app, you can add a warm-up set for any of your moves. And this will automatically reduce your weight by 60% or give you 60% of your weight and not impact your strength score or your weight recommendations. So it's a great way to warm up those deadlifts, those squats, those bigger compound movements. Try it out. Let us know what you think. This is a new feature, so we're always looking for your feedback. Um, all of these new features that I'm talking about are also linked above in a new features post that I posted yesterday or the day before. The days are all blending together. Uh, we also have this new timer when you're working out on tonal, when you're doing your sets, say you are a little bit more than halfway through your set and you are just gassed and you need a second to breathe. We've all been there. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. And you take a little pause. Tonal used to just move on assuming that you were finished with your set, but now there's a little button that says continue or uh, continued on to next move, something like that. You can either accept that or you can X out and stay on your move. So I know a lot of you have been asking for this for a long time. Uh, I'm really excited about this feature. I've used it a few times during Go Bigger Home 2 when it's leg day and you're on like squat number 75 out of 90 and you're just like, I need a second, Jackson, just give me one second. You just tap that weight off, say you're not ready to move on, and tonal waits for you. It's it's lovely. We also have new filters, so you can quickly find live beta classes and body weight only classes. Now, these filters are on your trainer, so let's just talk about live beta and um, body weight only classes for a second. So live beta, what is it? Well, for starters, it's Tonal's path to live, live, live classes, but they're really fun. In the meantime, your coach is working out with you on the trainer um, and Tonal's also counting your reps. So you'll notice in a class like a Tonal high intensity class, it's more cardio based. It's duration based. So you're getting your heart rate up for as many chops or as many goblet squats as you can. Um, but this, in, in live beta, Tonal is prescribing the reps and your coach is working out with you the entire time. So it's a really cool format. Give it a try. It's in that beta phase. So again, we are always looking for your feedback. And now you can quickly find those classes on your trainer. We also have a new icon for heart rate zones. And this was also because of your amazing feedback. We heard that some people weren't able to easily distinguish what heart rate zone they were in because maybe they were working out really hard and they just didn't have time to focus on that or they're colorblind. So our design team made it a little bit more easier. There's now little bars um, and it's color coded. It looks awesome. Check that out. And that's if you have your Apple Watch or your Bluetooth enabled heart rate monitor connected to, to the trainer. Okay, so that's it for new features. Go check those out, uh, linked above. We also have lots of great new content this week. If you are a Coach Allison fan, this is your week. She dropped tons of amazing content. She's got two new live betas, Core, Core Spring with Coach Allison and Glutes on Fire with Coach Allison. We also have Explore Your Core with Coach Paul. So lots of great core workouts that you can add on to your program days or in between program days. Check those out. She's got two new meditations, the light within and body scan. Great for those the sun to ease the Sunday night scaries. And she's got a full body warm up called full body kickstart. So you can add that in if you need a little extra oomph to get going. So check those out. Also linked above in the new content um, link. Okay, community events. Here's the fun stuff. 
Coach Liz's side-by-side -side challenge is starting March 1st. So that's run in an entirely different group. Run by Coach Liz, you're gonna get four virtual group workouts, four Facebook Live Q&As, and a couple of other goodies sprinkled in. She gives you recommendations for your off days, full month of programming and access to coach Liz's brain. So go join that challenge if you're looking for a new program to start in March. Book Club, Biohack Your Brain is our March book pick. This book is so good. I am almost finished and I've already sent two copies to family members. That's how good it is. It gives you a complete roadmap of how you can keep your brain, your most important organ in your body, healthy and in tip top shape as you age. Did you know that your brain starts to decline in your 30s? I didn't, now I do, now I do. And now I'm sending a copy to everyone. Check that out. Speaking of book club, we have our discussion for the February book, Can't Hurt Me, all about mindset, which we're gonna be talking about mindset a lot tonight with Max. Um, but this has been an incredible book. Even if you haven't read the book, feel free to join in for the book club discussion on Thursday tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Before book club, Coach Liz is doing an Ask a Coach session. So go to the events tab and write your questions for Coach Liz in the events so that she can answer them live. That is Thursday at four. And then we have a community virtual group workout happening Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We're doing one of Coach Jared's beginner workouts. It's about 20 minutes long. It's a perfect way to try the feature for the first time if you've never tried it before. So check the events tab, go to that workout, and go to that event, RSVP, and I'm gonna be dropping the code and directions on how to join in there. And then finally, we have the Black Excellence Series happening on Sunday night at 5 p.m. with Coach Allison, Coach Paul, and Coach Jared. There, we're going to be discussing ways to have hard conversations about race with family, friends, and colleagues. So please join in for that conversation. It's going to be amazing. Um, lots of great ways to learn how to be a better friend, colleague, and ally in that, in that Black Excellence Series. Okay, I think we made it through all the announcements. Are we ready for tonight's guest? Let's bring him in. So I'm very excited to welcome our guest this week. Mac Ar Max Artsis has recently joined the Tonal team as our talent development lead after spending years at Nike headquarters as a master trainer and training world-class athletes in the Olympics, NCAA, NFL, NBA, and MLB, and most recently working with Tonal owner and fan Chloe Kim. Um, he's the pro that the pros trust, and we're so lucky to get to pick his brain today. So please help me welcome Max. What's up? Hi, Max. We How did it. How are you? I'm glad all the uh, sound works for this one. Yeah, I mean, charades would be fun, but I'm a little I'm bit... Not like, it's not in my wheelhouse of skill sets, so... <laughs> Well, good. You, you're good at training professional athletes. We might need to, you know, work on the charades yeah. we'll for, for next time. I'll set. lean on you for that skill set. We'll do a little, uh, a little training session. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining the community today. I'm really excited to uh, introduce you to the community and the community to you because you are such a great resource for exercise science and fitness knowledge. And our community has so many great questions and they're just hungry to learn and you're the perfect person to teach them. So I'm excited for this session to be part you uh, sharing your wisdom after training so many professional athletes with our community, but also a chance for them to ask any questions at the end that they might have. And then we can do more of these kind of things in the future uh, with whatever they want to learn about. So uh, leave us feedback per usual. But before we get into that, I was hoping you could give us a little background on yourself and tell us how you got into the fitness industry to begin with. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, first of all, I appreciate, you know, everyone that's on here giving me the space to be able to share. Um, originally, I think I got into the fitness industry, like a combination of my dad and then playing sports. So I played football for eight years, uh, tennis for 14 years. And my dad was a bodybuilder. So I was exposed to weights at a very young age. Um, and then I probably started taking it seriously low later in my life, not because of um, performance specifically, but because I started to see how much confidence that I could instill in other people. And that was something that meant a lot to me and still does. Uh, it means everything to me. I love that. That's, I mean, confidence is so important for everyone. And I love that. 
um, strength, physical strength that we gain on tonal doesn't just help us raise our PRs or raise our strength score. We take that strength out into our jobs, out into the boardroom, out into our relationships, out into parenting, and it just creates this web and it's, it's, it sets the spark. So, um, Thank you for sharing confidence with our community. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your coaching career and like some highlights? I know you don't want to brag on yourself, but no, I'm no. uh, it's been a ride. I started at Equinox in West LA about uh, 10 or 11 years ago. I was there for three to four years. Um, and then it was the most ridiculous thing. I went on a random trip to Portland, Oregon to visit one of my friends um, up at Nike World Headquarters. And while he was in a meeting, I was working out in the gym. I started talking to someone, talking to someone else, talking to someone else. By the end of the day, I had a job offer. It was like the craziest experience ever. Um, nice. so I moved less than a month later. I ended up staying there for between six and seven years. Um, had the opportunity to work with some obviously incredible athletes and learn from some of the best executives in the world. Um, and really just to help to develop some really exciting projects um, for the company. So while I was there, I um, was a Nike master trainer. And then the last few years while I was up there, I was our master trainer lead. So I led our department um, and the network. And then we also, at the same time, I was working at a gym called Roke Performance, where we focused almost exclusively on youth athletes, which was so much fun for us. So I was the director of sports uh, science and education over there. And once I felt that I had squeezed every ounce of life that Portland had to give me, um, I came back down to LA to give more full-time um, attention to all of my, you know, higher end athletes down here in LA. And then that ultimately led me to being here with you, which I'm so excited about. Beautiful. And what made you switch from training these professional oh. athletes to working for Tonal? Because it was going to take my job, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I was a trainer too. <laughs> um, I got to get on the other side. <laughs> but, you know, obviously anytime someone has touched the tonal or used the tonal, they know immediately this is something that's special. Mm -hmm. um, so in a short answer, I used the tonal and that was it for me. Uh, it was kind of love at first sight blind date. The more complicated answer is that I don't think there are enough authentic strength and conditioning voices that are informing technology. I think there's this authentic, organic push-pull that comes with people that are in the strength industry that have really devoted their entire life to their craft and the pushing forward of new technology. And so the, really the way that I look at it is we can either wait around and complain about what we wish we saw, or we can be a part of the solution and help to shape the future of the company and the future of the industry. And so for me, that trade-off, um, while really difficult to leave some of my athletes behind, um, if I know that I can help to hopefully create an impact for millions of people in the future, uh, that's a, a trade-off I'll take 10 times out of 10. I mean, or like Chloe, you just have her get a tonal. And, and then, then we're good. Worlds. And then we're perfect. <laughs> um, so you've obviously learned a lot from training professional athletes, and there is this difference in intensity and um kind of like the, what the energy they bring to their training. And you've picked up on three main lessons that you wanted to share with our community. And these, these are things that aren't just reserved for professional athletes. It's something that everyone watching right now, everyone with a tonal can start doing in their daily lives so that they can train like, like the pros. Um, so Max, can you tell us what the first lesson that you learned was? Yeah, uh, the first lesson is your best ability is availability. Nobody yeah. cares <laughs> what you can deadlift if you're hurt. Okay. I, um, I think so often we get caught up in what the numbers are and what um, we're doing inside the gym that we forget why we're doing this in the first place. So mm -hmm. for an athlete specifically, if it doesn't translate to their sport, we shouldn't be doing it. Mm. And for the day-to-day -day consumer, you know, it's really important that we think about why are we lifting? Is it to be a better father? Is it to be a better mother? Is it to be a better friend? Is it to be able to play rec sports? Is it just that way you, when you get out of your bed, you're not in pain, right? What is the why behind what it is that you're doing? And that should form 80 to 90% of what you're doing when you're in the gym. Um, I think we need to do a better job of understanding progressive overload. 
I think this industry is very additive in nature. Let's do more. Let's add more. Let's keep doing more. Uh, team no sleep, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Um, progressive overload says if we stress the body too little, it withers and dies. If we stress the body too much, it crumbles from too much stress. But the thing that we need to realize is that stress is not, it cannot be compartmentalized. So stress is cumulative. When I'm thinking about taxes, when I'm worried about paying my rent, when I'm worried about this, when I'm thinking about that, when I'm having an argument with someone, and then on top of that, when I'm lifting weight, those are all forms of stress on the body. So we need to understand that this is all taking a cumulative effect on the body. And we have to understand where is that sweet spot of stress that we can place on it so that way we're continuing to adapt 1% up and to the right over and over and over again, rather than adding too much on the body too soon. And when you have a load that is greater than the capacity that you can handle it, that's what ultimately leads to either a breakdown or an injury. And that's no bueno. I see all the time community members just want more, harder, faster, stronger, more, harder, faster, stronger again and again. So I think that's a really important message to take a step back, think about your why, create your goal, and then formulate your plan to get that goal. And thankfully, there's programming on Tonal that helps you get there with that already has some of these little checkpoints built in. Like you'll find some um, stretching and mobilization within a really intense hypertrophy workout, or you'll have rest days built into your program, um, or you know you can you can add on meditation or yoga within your program. So it's kind of like we want you to do it all, but we want you to do it really smart. And there's no point in building a beautiful house if it's on quicksand, right? right? So that's why some of our programming is so amazing that we're able to take you where you need to go. But ultimately we look at this as a long journey. This is a lifetime goal. This is not something that's gonna end in six weeks. And how often do people work out and they look back a year later and they are exactly where they were. But if I told you that you could progress two and a half pounds every week, ultimately ending up in a hundred and something pounds next year, you'd probably take that. Mm -hmm. But that takes patience, that takes guidance, that takes an understanding that you need to rest, recover, and follow the guidelines that are being given to you on some of our amazing programs. Um, so that way you can give your time, your body time to heal. Because that's all we're doing in the gym. We're tearing muscle tissue. We're breaking down muscle tissue. And so if we don't take time to recover and repair that muscle tissue, all we're going to do is keep digging a deeper and deeper hole for ourselves. And then that, then you're injured and then you're sidelined and then you, you, you know, put a wrench in your progress. So slow and steady. Someone said in the comments, slow and steady, slow and steady. Um, Max, do you have something that the community can do, some takeaway that they can focus on to implement this first lesson into their lives? Yeah, I think everyone tries to accomplish everything, every workout. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing this right, hopefully you've got plenty of opportunities. So Something that we talk about from a cueing standpoint is sometimes as a coach, all I want you to do is focus on one thing for the duration of our entire workout. Are there other things that we can focus on that we can get better at? Of course. But if I talk about everything, I talk about nothing. Mm. So what if I only focused on making my hinge better during this, during this entire workout? Whatever else happens, I'm going to be okay with today. But I know that I'm going to work on perfecting my hinge or next time I'm gonna work on getting my bicep by my ear on my overhead press or whatever it is that you wanna work on or need to work on. But sometimes really taking something, planning against the wall and saying, I'm only gonna focus on this one thing at a time really allows us A, to hone in and master it. If I wanted to learn, if I wanted to become a lawyer, a doctor, if I wanted to learn Spanish, I wouldn't enroll in all of these things at the same time. It's impossible for me to be able to master all of this. So it's impossible for us to be able to expect that of our body as well. Yeah, Coach Jackson's always saying, you know, chunk down your workouts. If you have an hour long workout ahead of you, chunk it down into blocks and sets and reps. And I love that you're taking that one step further. You're saying not just rep by rep, but one specific aspect of the rep or one specific aspect of your training that you can really focus on and create that mind, con that whatever connection it is to that thing and just master that and then move on to the next thing and then you incorporate the thing you've already mastered into your workout and then then you progress over time absolutely we only have our attention span is only so limited right mm -hmm. so if we try to jam too much in there we're not going to accomplish what we want to
Yeah. So if you're watching and you can type in the comments, let us know what that one thing is that you can focus on on your next workout, the next rep that you do. So I'm excited to hear what our community has to say. Shall we move on? Let's do it. Okay. So what's lesson number two? Uh, the power of mindset. Oof. 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 Mindset. Oof. It's such a hot topic right now. So yeah. at the risk of, you know, feeding into that. The reason why most pro athletes are pro athletes, of course, other than their God given abilities and their hard work is what happens between their ears. Mm. Um, and that's something that really excited me uh, about what we're doing at Tonal is we're really looking at the other facets of what makes holistic health other than just sets, reps and weights. Yeah. Um, so can you give us a little like mindset? It's such a it's, it seems like so intangible. Like, how do I just have a better mindset? What do I do? <laughs> well, I think the first thing is to become aware of what our self-talk is, mm. right? You know, the, the person that talks to us the most is ourselves. Yep. So are we setting ourselves up for success or are we setting ourselves up for failure? Are we sabotaging ourselves before we even start? And it's not something that's going to change overnight, but recognition of patterns is something that we can do tomorrow. We can start to understand where's my brain going. And it's this power of neutral thinking. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's understanding good things will happen, bad things will happen. That's okay. But we're on the next rep, right? It's, it's almost the same theory as one rep at a time. What happened last time, whether good or bad, doesn't really matter now because I'm on the next rep and then I'm on the next rep and then I'm on the next rep. When I was working with quarterbacks, you know, you throw a pick, you learn from it, it is what it is, and you move on to the next rep. So the power of neutral thinking is something that almost every athlete that I've worked with, it's been a key pillar in what we focus on. Um, just understanding that it is what it is. The glass doesn't have to be half empty. It doesn't have to be full. It could just be half a glass and that's okay. Um, beyond that, every single one of my athletes has a journal hmm. and it's a gratitude journal. Our brain is just an information processor. It's just processing the information that we put into it. So if we actively are looking for things to be grateful about and things that are positive in our lives, subconsciously, we're actually gonna start looking for that in other areas of our life. So um, I, I can't tell you how amazing the transition has been with some athletes. The second you start focusing on the internal gratitude. I mean that can just go for anyone athlete or not, even though we're all athletes here, but I want to go back to what you were saying about neutral thinking. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is that it's kind of taking the emotions out of your thoughts and just letting them be what they are. But when you're a professional athlete, I imagine uh, there's, there's gotta be some emotion in the, the drive for what they're going after. So how do you separate those two? Is there, is there, do we still want emotion or not? there's always going to be some form of emotion, right? It's just, it's, it's just impossible. We focus in on breath work for the most part. Um, so through data, what we've actually done is through EEG leads. So if, we're, if I can get kind of nerdy with you for a second. Right, the community loves the nerdier, the better. Your brain actually has high beta ratios and theta ratios. And okay. one is responsible for um, your like the brain being toward ADHD and a little bit of anxiety. And then on the other side of the spectrum is dynamic, focus, cool, calm, and collected. And they found through doing EEG leads that all of the most um, high level professional athletes find themselves under 1.0 high beta ratio, which means if I'm an athlete standing over a putt, that's a million dollars or $3 million or $5 million, I'm able to take a deep breath, quiet everything out, and then hit the putt. So for us, breath work is the way that we mitigate emotions. Mm. What are some, do you have some like quick breath work strategies? One of my favorite ones that we did with um, Andy Puticum, who is the founder of Headspace when he came out mm -hmm. to our combine training is he gave us a one minute meditation that I really enjoyed. And it's literally just going wide to close. Mm -hmm. So while focusing on our breath, he basically asked us to take in the entire room like all the way wide, as far as you possibly can, take three or four breaths there, and then focus in on the smallest little piece that you could possibly find, 
three or four breaths there and then go back out and then go small again. And by doing that wide to close thinking within a minute, and obviously no one knows what you're doing because you're just standing there looking off into space. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a really wonderful way to get centered within 60 seconds. So you would say do that even in a game or if you're on the sidelines or in between tonal sets or just before a meeting or something like that? Wide, close, wide, close. Do it two to three times. You're out. You're centered. You're feeling good. Okay. I think that's our, our action item for the community. I love it. <laughs> cool. Um, if anyone's trying it right now, let us know. Yeah. And Amal said that he's going to focus on uh, perfecting his RDL in his next workout. I love, love that. Love that. Yes. Okay. Moving on. What is the third and final lesson? I mean, I'm sure it's not the final lesson, but you're going to share three. We get three out of you today. So let's yeah. Um, it's a bit of a selfish one, but it is what it is. Um, I don't think I realized how important that my coaching was to bringing out the best in somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and it obviously made me take my craft very, very seriously. Um, but you start to realize through the queuing that I create, through the journey that I've created, and through the relationship that I've created, um, I have a lot of responsibility over the success or and or failure of, of what the outcome is. Mm. And how how can our community members kind of in, in bring this into their own lives? Yeah. Um, so you know like love languages, right? Yes. What's yours? Oh. Next? Um, physical touch and quality time. Okay. I'm spending a lot of physical touch, quality time with my tonal. It's been great. <laughs> um, almost think about how you learn is significantly more important than what you're learning. Mm, interesting. So with some of my athletes, do they, are they motivated by success? Mm. Are they motivated by the fear of failure? Mm. Are they motivated by teamwork and camar camaraderie? by beating themselves or by a rivalry with someone else. Because if I don't know that about you, then the cueing I'm giving you may not work, mm. right? If I'm talking to you about success, but really I know the best way to get, out, get things out of you is talking to you about fear of failure, I'm doing you a disservice. So I think it's really important for people to start to understand and tap into, oh, he said that cue to me, that really resonated with me. And then you can start to look in the tonal community at who our coaches are that are doing that time in and time out. And you can start to not just figure out from like a random, oh, I like his biceps. Oh, he has a great smile. Oh, I like the way his voice sounds. But you can start to see this coach speaks my language. Mm. You can start to understand patterns, which will lead to you to ultimately lifting more weight and getting in better, healthier shape. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, our coaches, there's such a range and they all have their own personalities and they all have their own like niche clients. And yeah. I think it's so important. I think that's such a great idea is to like get to know them in the community, try a bunch of classes on, on a bunch of workouts on tonal and figure out which coach you vibe with best. And so then you're more plugged into your workouts. You're going to listen up for the cues and you're going to, you're, you're going to just have your mind in the right space so that you can get the most out of your workout. It's all about consistency, right? So just who do you want to spend more time with? Yeah. Yeah. And we, I mean, I think I spend just as much time with my tonal as I do Morgan pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that. That's, that's great. Okay. So let's recap that. It right. was uh, the first one was look back at my notes um, the best, a uh, best ability is availability, availability. Um, and that means a lot of alliteration. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> and that means just being really intentional with your why behind your training and figuring out the, your goal and then matching your goal to the program that you're going to do and the workouts that you're going to do and the workouts. Cool. Intent is your secret sauce. If your workout is supposed to be going fast, you better be going fast. If it's yeah. supposed to be powerful, be powerful. If you're supposed to be lifting heavy, lift heavy. Yeah. How does someone figure out, can you give any advice on figuring out your goal? Like if you're not a professional athlete, like I'm not trying to hit a ball as fast as I possibly can. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm well, a, do you, want a role play or do you want me to do this with you right now? Let's do it. Okay. So what are the most important things to you in your life right now? Oh, okay. We're really doing this. Yeah, we're doing it. Okay. Most important things in my life right now. Yeah. My partner, cause I know she's watching right now. Yeah. Um, my, my overall health, just um, 
general health and wellness. And I'd say my job, I'm pretty passionate about Tolano in our community. So let's go yeah. those. What types of things do you like to do with your partner? Um, we just went to Palm Springs for the weekend, which was really lovely. Um, we love to cook together. We love to work out together. We do partner workouts and go for runs all the time together. I'll give you those three. Do you feel like your general health allows you to do that with her more often? Yes, definitely. If I weren't feeling healthy or if I'm not feeling my best or if I'm feeling really stressed, I can't do those things. So do you think that by lifting on tonal, you're a better partner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And I think that we're more connected because we, it's also something that we can do together. So while we didn't just touch on intent, we also did just touch on a really, really important why for you, right? Mm -hmm. If we just said, I want to lose weight, I just want to do this, I just want to do that, we motivation is fluctuating. I'm going to wake up tomorrow with a different motivation because I'm dehydrated and I got my six pack out and I feel good, then I'm not going to touch it. But if I know that me going on that tone is going to make me the best partner to my person that I possibly could be, that's really, really important. I once worked with someone who was a retired snowboarder and he said to me, I want to work more on my mobility. I said, well, why would you want to work on your, more on your mobility? And he said, well, I would love to get back out snowboarding. I go, why is that important to you? He's like, I don't know. It's just fun. I really want to do it. And I want to be out there. And he's like, yeah. And I just had my kid. And I was like, oh, do you want to take your kid snowboarding? He's like, it'd be amazing to be able to take my kid snowboarding. So I said, do you think that that would make you feel like you're a better father? He goes, absolutely. So I said, you increasing your mobility is going to make you a better father. He's like, yeah. I go, cool. I guarantee you we're never going to miss a workout. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whew. Okay. So our community can kind of take that away and maybe in a journal or something think about their why and drill down deeper think about another layer another layer another layer and really get to the heart of it so that those moments where you don't feel like working out you don't feel like walking over to your tonal you do it anyways and you'll start to figure out what hobbies are most important to you what actions are most important to you you know for some people it's just hey i don't want to wake up in pain anymore yeah right and a lot of people think mobility is just sitting around and breathing into a stretch but a lot of times the reason you're in pain is because your body can't handle the capacity for load that you're putting on it. Mm -hmm. So what, one of the biggest ways that we can increase capacity to load is to get stronger. So one of the easiest ways that maybe you get out of pain is by you getting stronger. Yeah, so, so many people are so scared to move and to use their bodies when they're in pain, but that's actually the one way to help get out of pain. Yeah. Okay. This is amazing. Um, I want to ask you one more question, yeah. but before we do that i want to let the community know that you have access to max's brain for another couple of minutes literally trainer to the pros um put some questions in the comments and we will get to them and while you're thinking of those questions and there's a little bit of a delay max is going to tell us what it means for him to be his strongest oh man um i think culturally we look at things very binary it either is or it isn't. And in strength, we look at things from an absolute point of view. How much do you lift? How much money do you have? How successful are you? But what I care about in the gym is similar to what I care about in life, which is relative strength. Where are you relative to your personal starting line? Because people's genes will affect where they started in athletics. People's childhood will affect um, how athletic they are when they're older, right? Uh, socioeconomic status will affect a lot of things for a lot of people. So for me, I care significantly less about your absolute strength. And what I care about is how far have you gone from your starting point, your personal starting point. And that's why everyone's journey is so individualistic and personal to them. Most improved. I'm just thinking about like the accolades, most approved, improved. And I think it's really cool that Tonal allows us to track that like so tangibly with data right in the palm of our hand where you can actually see a little chart, a little bar graph um, to know that you are getting stronger. And then you can go out and you can feel that. And like you said before, you can feel more confident in not just your day-to-day -day life, but in your movements, when you're picking up your kids, when you're loading up the car, when you're doing all the things that we do every day, we might not be, you know, making grand slams and uh, winning titles, but we are doing things that are important to us and to our families and to be able to do those with confidence and strength is huge. Absolutely. And look, we don't lose mobility because we get older. We lose mobility because we stop moving. 
right? Yeah. We don't get slower because we're getting older. We get slower because most people after high school sports, sports stop sprinting. Yeah. So, uh, if you want a greater capacity to do things, you just have to do them more often. So true. Challenge yourself. Okay. We have a question from Deborah. Deborah asks, Ooh, I love this. Will Max be in front of the camera on Tonal, a Max program, possibly a Max workout? We never, say never. never say never. <laughs> okay. All right. What would your ideal workout or program be? Um, I would love, I think our, I mean, look, our trainers already are doing such a wonderful job. And I, my main focus 100% of the time is lifting them up and making sure that you guys have the single greatest trainer network known to the history of man. Um, but that said, if my number gets called, I'm in. Uh, it would probably be something more, much more in the sport performance uh, realm. Well, you all know where Feedback Friday is. And so you can all request a max sports performance program. <laughs> okay, we have a question from Melanie Nicole. She says, one thing I struggle with is choosing a strength training track on tonal, fitness or strength or forget the other one bulk. Any of those, uh, any one of those could be useful to achieving my why, which is about building physical confidence. So maybe I don't choose any one and hop around or maybe I don't make progress if I do that and I have to choose a goal track. Does this even make sense? Melanie, this does make sense. Uh, so basically Melanie is asking, how does she choose a track on tonal, a goal on tonal? Yeah, um, if you don't know where to start, if you don't know what to do, I will tell you this, no one ever got worse getting stronger, mm -hmm. right? So um, one of the biggest problems with a class pass, with all of these workouts that are so bespoke and one-off, is you can't track how we're getting better, mm -hmm. right? Progressive overload, right? We're changing one thing at a time. We're getting get better at something. We're mastering something. Um, no matter what your goals are, if you hop, 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 I promise you, you're not going to get to any of them, which would mm -hmm. be a real big bummer. So best case, worst case, why don't we just pick one? Doesn't matter which it is. You'll master it and then we'll move on to the next. Because like we talked about earlier, uh, unless you're planning to compete in the 2022 Tokyo Olympics, um, or 21 Tokyo Olympics this year. Nobody can decide. Every year it's getting pushed out too. Um, this is going to be a lifelong endeavor for you. So uh, I will say for everyone, mobility and strength, no one ever got worse getting more mobile and stronger. Ooh, cool. Okay. So yeah, pick one, master it, move over to the next one, learn something along the way. That's yeah. fun. And that takes the pressure off of it. Like we, you don't have to be perfect. Just set a target and reach it. And we do it in, in such an unhealthy way where we start getting stronger, but then we realize we're getting slower. So then we stop and we go over to the speed one and then we stop and go over to this power one. And then in four or five months, I'm no better off than when I started. I mean, I'm a little better off, but I haven't gotten where I wanted to go. So deep dive on something, worst case scenario, you got better at it and you can move on to the next. Yeah. And just stay with it. <laughs> uh, she said, cool. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing strength track, even though I'm hopping through all the fitness program, it's is my secret favorite. Melody, I know you're crushing it. I've been watching you in the community for a long time. It's important for people to know that variability is overrated. Hmm. Okay. Want to elaborate that on that a little bit? I think it's men mentally stimulating for us. Yeah. And um, in sports world, movement variability is super important because we have to expose you to so many high level um, places that your body might find itself in, in a weird game and also getting hit by, you know, 100, 250 pound dude. But in life, our body craves consistency. So while our brain creates craves vulnerability, uh, variability, our body craves consistency. So um, don't be afraid of those four week programs where you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over again, because that's how you get better. Yeah, I, we see this all the time. And People come in maybe from other fitness companies where it's a different class every day. And that's cool for maybe like cardio or something. But when it's strength, you do need that programming, that expert programming, that consistency, that repeated exposure so that you can get see progress and not just be all over the place and get injured. But to address uh, that mental stimulation point that you mentioned, we have started mixing in some variables um, in a way that still makes sense, but keeps people a little bit more engaged, right? 
of course, spotter uh, with dynamic flex, with eccentric mode, with chains mode, right? Changing up tempos is one of the easiest and most founded ways for people to be able to find some sort of variability in doing the same movement pattern. Yeah. Yeah, tempo is a huge one. Yeah, slowing down the eccentric, maybe powerful on the concentric, all those things. Um, okay. Oh, this is great. Amal said um, he is an avid cyclist. After using tonal for a month, um, he could feel improvement on his time and spend more time on his bike. So I trained a professional mountain biker. And um, similar to runners, I feel like a lot of endurance athletes just think they just need to continue to do endurance that that sport. Yeah. Right. It's like golfers who the only way they warm up is going out to the range and just start swinging. Mm -hmm. but there's so many ways that we can strengthen the body in all three planes of motion, right? If I'm locked in here, I'm only moving in the sagittal plane. What about what's happening here? Right. What about what's moving in side to side? So moving side to side is going to create stability for your body. Um, moving in rotation is going to be able to create a lot of velocity. So making sure that we're really strengthening the body holistically, of course, you're going to see major, major, major gains on a bike. And the stronger we can make you while lightening your body, the more relative power you're going to have on the bike. Win win for everyone. Perfect. Um, cool. Rebecca says is a really great mind feed. Max would love another tonal talk with you sometime soon. Thanks for all of this. Rebecca, let us know what topic you want. You want Max to talk about anyone else? Thanks, let, Rebecca. let us know. You got a, you got some fans tonight. Um, okay. I love this question from Deborah. She says, what are your favorite, um, what are your top favorite features on tonal? Ooh, this is a tough one. There's so many. I'll tell you the magnetic weight system. Digital weight. The digital weight is unlike anything I felt before, and it is remarkably humbling. Um, so I really, really love that. I love that we have eccentric mode. Um, I think that eccentrics build your brakes. Mm -hmm. right? How fast would you drive a Ferrari if you knew the brakes were cut? Probably not very fast. So I think more people can spend more time really, really honing in that eccentric portion of their exercises. And it's great that that's something that we have stood behind. It's built, built right in with a click of the button. Okay, Max, this is one question for me. Where do you think the future of fitness is going? Oh, man, I told you it's going to take my job. So I had to get on the other end of it. <laughs> Look, there's always going to be a need for community, right? There's always going to be a need for this, this right here. Um, so I think that that's really important. I'm just really excited to see where the data goes. Um, the important thing for us to make sure that we're doing as a industry is not inundating the consumer with so much data that we aren't doing anything with it. Data for the sake of data is not helpful. It's a distraction. So really making sure that as we continue to get more data, as we continue to get more feedback, that we're doing something with it. Mm -hmm. And what's so exciting about Tonal is that it is digital weight, so we can collect that data because you can't do that with dumbbells at the gym, but we can collect so much data on every single rep and then, like you said, turn that into actionable pieces of advice. Yes. And this is such, look, it's such um, an individualistic endeavor and journey because everyone's why is different. Everyone's biomechanics are different, right? In a deadlift, I'm five... 10 with a different femur length than you have with a different injury history than you with you than you have with the different ankle mobility than you have so our deadlifts are going to look different and that's fine that's okay but with data that's something that we can then go on the other end and really help the consumer figure out what is the best position and what is the best modality for them to use not what is the best thing that their buddy that's at the gym told them worked for them and somehow it's a magic celery juice that's going to work for them Ooh. You know, I know celery juice isn't like that's a, that's a whole nother to tonal talk, but it's delicious. You have to admit it tastes good. <laughs> uh, no comment. I don't want to make any enemies tonight. No comment. <laughs> um, Susan Johns Campbell. I love this question, too. This is comes up in the community all the time. This comes up in fitness all the time. Is it possible to lose fat and gain strength, gain muscle simultaneously? 
Yes, but focus on building the muscle. Don't fail to focus on losing the fat. Okay, tell us, tell us why. Muscle mass, the more muscle you mass you have, the more caloric burn you have. So simply by having a more dense being, you will begin to lose more weight. Are you calling me a dense being? Huh? Are you calling me a dense being? <laughs> it's better than hypertrophy, getting bigger. <laughs> um, and look, a lot of times fat loss is not going to come down. And yes, a lot of it's going to come down to what we do on there, but you can't outwork a bad diet, right? So this is a lifestyle. This is a synergistic being, right? It is about sleep. Sleep is when we release the most amount of our growth hormone and testosterone. And yes, women need testosterone as well. So sleep is so important. Getting in the right mental headspace, so important. Your diet, so important. And then getting stronger is so important. Um, so I would say if you're really focused on getting stronger on the tonal, the fat loss will be a wonderful byproduct of that. Okay, so follow up question for that. Yeah. If you have more muscle, then you burn more calories. Doesn't that mean you're just hungrier and you eat more and then it balances out? I don't know that there's a direct correlation between the two. I don't know that I'm, so I'm not a registered nutritionist, so I don't want to ruffle anyone's feathers, you know, on here. A lot of the, a lot of my, um, my nutritional comments are very anecdotal and just things that I've, you know, research papers that I've read. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. We'll leave it at that. I, that's just my experiences. I am just hungry all the time, <laughs> but that's no matter what I do. <laughs> that you might be dehydrated. No, I drink a whole gallon every day. Yeah. And then do you equate eating more with being bad? Um, no, it just depends on the type of food. Right. So if we're focused on whole foods, we're focused on the outside of the grocery store, right? That's like yeah. the easiest way for people to think about it. Shop on the outside of the grocery store, not the aisles. Mm -hmm. You know, if you give me an avocado, I'm going to be full for quite a while, no matter how much muscle I've got on my body. Yeah. But really making sure to focus on whole real foods, right? Like people feel bad that they overindulge on these snacks. They have some of the most brilliant scientists working their butt off to literally make you indulge. That's their entire life's work. Mm -hmm. so don't feel bad about that. But the easiest way to avoid a lot of that, drink more water, eat more whole foods. Well, something that's really cool in this book, Biohack Your Brain, is they, there's a whole nutrition section. And a lot of the, the advice is what we've heard for general health and wellness and physical fitness. Eat whole foods, eat mostly plants, uh, drink a lot of water. And it's no surprise that that is what would be good for your brain. But it was really cool to see it written out like, okay, when I choose good foods, it's not just because I want to like look good in a bikini. It's also helping my brain function better and help, you know, keep my mind sharp and ward off early onset dementia or anything like that. So there's yeah. so much to whole foods and just eating, eating smart and healthy. Yeah. One of my friends wrote a book uh, called Genius Foods. Uh, his mm -hmm. name is also Max, Max Lugavere. He lost his mother to um, dementia. And so mm -hmm. he spent his entire life literally just figuring out how can diet and lifestyle help to prevent, or at least as much as you possibly can, dementia and Alzheimer's and things like that. So the things that I'm doing in my 30s right now are gonna affect me significantly when I'm in my 70s. Um, so it's something that we need to start on and we need to start right meow. But, yeah. Yeah. but I mean, look, from a diet perspective, if anyone's ever hung out with trainers, I think we eat the most out of anyone I've ever met in my life. So sure. don't be shamed if you're eating a lot of food, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm going to eat dinner right after this. Um, okay. If we don't have any other questions, we've kept you on here for 50 minutes. I think we'll, we'll start wrapping it up. Sounds good. Uh, so thank you so much, Max. Uh, I'll be on the lookout for what our community wants to learn about, learn more about. I'm thinking we can do some master class deep dives on maybe like deadlifts and squats and the main moves and all sorts of things. I'm excited and I'm really grateful that you are on the tonal team to help us and take us, help us reach our goals. I appreciate you. And I appreciate everyone for, for giving us the space to, to have this conversation. We have a pretty awesome community. So thank you all for, for tuning in. And I wanted to plug that there's a sale at the gear shop. So if you want, 
some sweet tonal apparel, which I just realized I'm not wearing anything that's in the gear shop right now. Neither is Max. That was silly. Uh, but there's a code secret sale 21. Make sure you are logged into your gear shop account, different from your tonal account, and then enter the discount code and you will get 15% off and free shipping. So that hey. is Yo, <laughs> I should have had you do some like Vanna White type thing. When I'm I sorry. Out. If I had my air horn, I would just be firing it off right now for you. <laughs> um, but that goes until March 1st. So go grab your gear so you can rep your favorite fitness company, Tonal. Um, and then, oh, look who popped in. Kelly Savage. Oh, hi, Kelly. He said, can I get that sign hanging on the wall behind you at the gear shop? Not yet. Um, but so glad you commented just on the sign, <laughs> Coach Kelly. <laughs> Good to see you, Kelly. Okay, Max, thank you so much. Uh, next week, we will be on with Coach Liz to talk about um, training on tonal for longevity. So training on tonal in your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, we got to get someone in their hundreds on tonal. That's my goal. I'm into it. Well, reach out to me in 80 years and we'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll be training on tonal. <laughs> <laughs> so tune in next week for that. Go get your tonal gear. And uh, like I said, there's so many events happening in the community this week. Check them out in the comments above. New features, new content, new events. So much going on. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll see everyone soon. Thanks, Thank Matt. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>